The Bears enter this weekend coming off the toughest two-game stretch of the season. We came out of it 1-1 one and, one and tied for first place in the NFC North. The Lions and Vikings battle each other tomorrow, and the Packers face Tom Brady and the Bucks. The NFL season is full of ebbs and flows. Every team experiences ups and downs throughout the season. There's a reason people say any given Sunday. Games aren't played on paper, they are played on the field. As fans of the Chicago Bears, we've had it rough for a long time. We have to remember not to get too high or too low off any one game. It's important to remember that this is just the beginning of the journey. This team is building something special. We aren't the most talented team in the league right now. We are one of the youngest and we have a ways to go. But things are still looking up. This week we are back at home at Soldier Field going against the Houston Texans and former head coach Lovey Smith. The Bears come in with the 32nd ranked offense and the Texans have the 24th. Both of our offenses rank near the bottom of the NFL. The Texans rank a little bit higher, but they played against the Colts and the Broncos, two defenses that just aren't as good as the two Chicago has faced. This will be Luke Getze's first shot, calling plays against a defense that isn't top 10 in the league. He should be able to open things up quite a bit. This is a big game for Justin Fields and Luke Getze. It's still very early in the year, but if this passing game doesn't look respectable against the Texans' defense, the overreactions will just get worse. Both teams have five sacks this year. The Bears have allowed five on offense. The Texans have allowed six. Both offenses are struggling, averaging 14.5 points per game apiece. This is also another chance for Justin Fields to go head-to-head -head against another signal caller from the same draft class, this time a guy who went much later than him, quarterback Davis Mills. Mills was a guy that me and a lot of other fans studied last year. If we were unable to land Justin Fields, then Mills would have been a very realistic QB target for us. Luckily, things worked out and we got our QB1. But this is a chance for him to go head-to-head -head against Davis Mills. The Texans are a team that, like the Bears, don't have a ton of weapons on offense. The top wide receiver is Brandon Cooks, who is a solid, if not unspectacular, player with a lot of speed. The number two guy is Nico Collins, and the starting running back is Rex Burkhead. However, I believe the X factor for this game is rookie Damian Pierce. The dude has so much burst and agility, and his contact balance is next level. He does an awesome job staying on his feet. He started the season off behind Rex Burkhead, but through two games, he has gotten 26 carries to Burkhead's 14, even though he's not the starter. He's a much more dynamic player. They use Rex a lot more in the passing game, and he out-targets Pierce 11-2. I expect to see a lot of Damian Pierce in this one, and the defense has to key on him when he's in the game. I like Pierce a lot, and he worries me more than anyone else on this Texans offense. The Texans have two touchdown passes on the year, both going to tight end O.J. Howard, who has a total of three catches. The key to this game for the Bears on the defensive side of the ball is stopping the run and not letting Brandon Cooks get loose in the secondary. On offense, our X factor is going to be David Montgomery. He's coming off a huge game versus the Packers, and the last time we played the Texans, he opened the game with an 80-yard touchdown run. I expect Monty to get a lot of work in this one, but we should finally see Justin Fields and Darnell Mooney open up this passing attack. The Texans' defense is not intimidating. Our scoring defense is very close. The Bears are at 12th at 18.5 points per game, and the Texans at 9th at 18. When it comes to rush defense, the Bears are dead last, giving up nearly 190 yards per game. The Texans aren't much better, though, coming in ranked 30th, allowing 163 yards per game. The pass defense is the biggest difference, where the Bears rank much higher, allowing only 183 yards per game through the air, good for 7th best in the entire league. While the Texans struggle in that category, they give up 270 passing yards a game and rank 26. 
Total defense, the Bears give up 372 yards per game and rank 22nd, while the Texans have the 31st ranked defense and give up 433 yards a game. The X factor on the Texans defense so far this year has been defensive end Jerry Hughes. Through two games, he leads the team in sacks with two. He has a tackle for loss, a forced fumble, and an interception. The other guy to watch out for is rookie corner Derek Stingley Jr. He was the number three overall pick in this year's draft and is one of the most talented corners to come out in a long time. He bursted onto the scene as a true freshman at LSU and is a guy I've followed for years. He leads Houston in tackles with 15 so far and is definitely a guy I would keep my eye on when it comes to the Texans defense. On our defense, the biggest X factors are pass rush. Spearheaded by a three-man rush that has played lights out through two games, Robert Quinn, Dominique Robinson, and Travis Gibson hopefully will continue their great play this weekend and put pressure on Davis Mills. I think this is a game where our secondary plays much better. Mills is a young quarterback, and Eddie Jackson often takes advantage of the young signal callers. He can get caught out of position when going against the great ones, but usually he can make a play or two against the more inexperienced guys. I will be looking for Jaquan Brisker to make a big play in this one. I think Kyler Gordon is going to have a much better game, and we should also get to see Jack Sanborn with the first team defense. A lot of positives to take into this game. Let's also check in on the injury report for anybody who missed it. Texans will be without tight end Brevin Jordan and a couple of backups. Defensive tackle Malik Collins is also questionable for this one. The Bears will be without linebacker Matt Adams, defensive back Dane Cruikshank, and tight end Ryan Griffin. Bayless Jones Jr. is doubtful to play even after participating in limited practice on Thursday and Friday. Roquan Smith and Jalen Johnson are both listed as questionable, but both guys are expected to play Sunday. I think we all drank a little bit too much of the Kool-Aid last week. We did have a chance to be in that game, but a couple of calls went against us, and the Packers made plays when they needed to. I expect a bounce-back win this weekend. No NFL games are easy, but this is a game I expect us to be in control throughout most of the day and hopefully get a statement win. I am predicting a 27-17 victory this weekend. We need to get back on track. Fans are down after last week's performance on primetime. Me too. A loss this weekend would devastate a lot of us. In the NFL, it's always one game at a time, and it's important the team focuses on beating the Texans this weekend. This is one of the few games this season where we are actually the more talented team. We should be the favorites for this one. Right now, we are at least three-point favorites. We are the more talented team and playing at home. How we play this Sunday will show us a lot about what this team is made of. Expect us to continue laying the foundation and taking small steps towards being a dangerous team in the NFL. Stay tuned, guys. We play the Houston Texans tomorrow at Soldier Field. If you are going to the game, enjoy it. Have a great time. This weekend should hopefully be much more enjoyable to watch than the Packers game was. Stay tuned. Hit that like button for me. And until next time, bear down.